Hello everyone. Today I would like to share with you the conversation that I had with the ChatGPT, the IA uh, site that responds with intelligence your questions. I, uh, we talk about the monetary system and those were the questions that I made and the answers that she gave me. Let's go. First question was, today I would like to hear what you can say about our current monetary system. Here's the answer. Sure, I'd be happy to provide some information about the current monetary system. The current monetary system is a complex network of financial institutions, government policies, and market forces that govern the creation, circulation, and value of money. In most countries, the monetary system is based on a fiat currency, which is money that has no intrinsic value and is not backed by a physical commodity like gold or silver. Instead, fiat money is created by central banks, which are the institutions responsible for controlling the money supply and maintaining price stability. Central banks use a variety of tools to achieve these goals, including setting interest rates, regulating banks, and buying and selling government securities. The global monetary system is also shaped by international organizations like the International Monetary Fund, IMF, and the World Bank which provide loans and technical assistance to countries experiencing economic difficulties. The value of currencies is also influenced by market forces, such as supply and demand, political stability, and economic growth. Despite its many complexities and challenges, the current monetary system has facilitated global economic growth and development over the past several decades. However, it is also subject to criticism and debate, particularly regarding issues like income inequality, financial instability, and the role of central banks in the economy. In response to that, I asked, is it true that the value of the money comes from the public and private debt altogether and that the system is always in the process of total collapse? Hear how she responded. The value of money is derived from a variety of factors, including its level of scarcity, the stability of the issuing government or central bank, and the level of demand for that currency in global markets. Public and private debt can also play a role in shaping the value of a currency, as excessive levels of debt can lead to inflation or a loss of confidence in the economy. However, it is not accurate to say that the current monetary system is always in the process of total collapse. While the system is certainly subject to periodic crises and disruptions, it has also proven to be resilient and adaptable over time. One of the key advantages of the current monetary system is that it allows for a high degree of flexibility and responsiveness to changing economic conditions. Central banks can adjust interest rates and implement other policy measures to help stabilize markets and prevent systemic risks from developing. That being said, the current monetary system is not without its flaws and challenges. For example, some critics argue that the system is too heavily skewed towards the interests of large financial institutions and that it fails to adequately address issues like income inequality and climate change. Others have raised concerns about the potential for currency wars or the accumulation of excessive debt in certain countries. Overall, it is important to approach discussions about the monetary system with a nuanced and informed perspective recognizing both its strengths and weaknesses. Then I asked, how about creating a non-monetary system like the ones imagined in the fiction, like in the Star Trek universe, where the technology, technology is so advanced that turns the money obsolete? How she responds?
The idea of a non-monetary system, where technology has advanced to a point where money is no longer necessary, has been explored in science fiction such as the Star Trek universe. In this fictional world, the advanced technology allows for the efficient allocation of resources without the need for a traditional monetary system. While this concept may be appealing in theory, it is important to consider the practical challenges of implementing such a system in real life. In our current world, economic production and consumption are driven by the pursuit of profit and the exchange of goods and services for money. This system has evolved over centuries and is deeply ingrained in the way our societies function. It is also important to note that the elimination of money would not necessarily solve all of the economic problems we face, such as inequality or resource scarcity. In fact, it could potentially create new challenges, such as how to allocate resources in a fair and equitable manner without the pricing mechanism that money provides. While it is important to explore new ideas and possibilities for how our economic systems can evolve, any significant changes would need to be carefully considered and thoughtfully implemented to ensure their effectiveness and viability. So, uh, I asked, in this matter, if not a non-monetary system, how about implementing an universal minimal income? So the motivation to personal growth would not lay on survival only. That's how she responded. The idea of a universal basic income, UBI, also known as a universal minimum income, has gained traction in recent years as a potential solution to address issues such as poverty and income inequality. Under a UBI system, all citizens or residents would receive a regular, unconditional cash payment from the government, regardless of their income or employment status. Proponents of UBI argue that it could help alleviate poverty, reduce income inequality, and provide individuals with the financial security to pursue education, training, or other opportunities that might not be feasible under traditional welfare systems. However, critics of UBI argue that it could be expensive to implement, could disincentivize work and reduce productivity, and could potentially be a burden on the economy if not properly financed. It is worth noting that there have been some successful UBI pilot programs implemented in various countries, such as Finland and Canada, which have shown promising results. However, implementing a full-scale UBI system would require significant political will and would need to be carefully designed to address the potential drawbacks. Overall, while a UBI system could be a potential solution to address some of the challenges of our current economic system, it is important to consider the potential costs, trade-offs, and unintended consequences before implementing such a system on a large scale. Then I finally asked her, how the fact of most of our money today is digital could affect this policy if implemented globally? And that's how she responded. The fact that most of our money today is digital could have both positive and negative effects on the implementation of a universal basic income, UBI. On the positive side, the digitization of money has made it easier and cheaper to transfer funds and distribute payments electronically, which could facilitate the implementation of a UBI system. Digital payment systems could allow for automatic and efficient distribution of funds to all citizens or residents, reducing administrative costs and increasing the speed and accuracy of payments. However, the digitization of money also raises concerns about privacy and security. A UBI system that relies heavily on digital payments could potentially create a centralized database of financial information that could be vulnerable to hacking or data breaches. Furthermore, the concentration of financial power in the hands of a few large tech companies that control digital payment systems could also pose a challenge to the implementation of a UBI system. These companies would have significant control over the distribution of funds and could potentially abuse their power to influence government policy or extract rent-seeking fees from the system. Overall, the digitization of money could have both positive and negative impacts on the implementation of a UBI system. 
It is important to carefully consider the potential risks and benefits of different payment systems and to ensure that any UBI system is designed to protect privacy, security, and democratic governance. Then I finally comment with her. I guess we need to give more thought to that. But thank you. She replied, and I think we all need to think about these matters because our economy, economy, uh, based on monetary system, need to be rethink in a, in a short time because we are in danger for many many reasons. So that's the video for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe the video. Bye.